Um, you will see a coach Q&A from somebody on the team who's rocking it. Um, and tonight will be our first one. Take it away, Rachel. All right. Oh my gosh, I can't see my own screen. Okay. Um, it is... I almost said December. It is January 24th. We have one week and I believe one day left. Uh, yeah, one week left until the end of the month. Plenty of time to lock in Success Club. If you have not already, lots of time to help more people if you are putting in the work now. Um, at Success Club 10, we have myself and Lori at 12. And then Kate Caitlin, Danny, Erica, and Kristen have also locked in Success Club 10. And then Angela, Shauna, and Laura Simon at Success Club 8. Erin, oh, and Raquel also. And Erin, Genevieve, Danny, Erica, Leah, uh, Danielle, Valerie, and Jen also having locked in Success Club 6. Congratulations to New Emeralds, Valerie Henderson and Erica Ramirez. And big congrats to uh, Laura Simon's whole team for being in, I believe, week three of six of five-star qualifying. They are more than halfway there, which is super exciting and cannot wait to shout them out from the rooftops and celebrate them like crazy when they lock it all in and it is officially official. All right, so I am going to open it up for Miss Angela Waters. She is has a lot of questions. She probably won't get through all of them, so no worries. Um, if, if needed, we'll have her go live within the team page. But she has been a coach, well, she started as a customer, um, has been under the radar coach last November, what, 2019, but then officially came out February 2020 and has hit the ground running. You've seen her on the leaderboards. Um, if you don't follow her stories, you should because she brings so much energy. She's a rocking good time. A mom of two sets of twins. I have one. I don't know how you have two. Um, and has just had an incredible transformation. And if you know her, you love her because her energy is magnetic. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over. Angela, I believe you have the questions. So if you just want to start answering them and away we go, the chat is always open as well for us to add more. Great. Can you hear me? Okay. All right. So I think that I have 18 questions that I collected from three different spots where people were dropping questions. So I'm going to speak as fast as I can with, without you not being able to understand me. Um, I, these are in no specific order, uh, except for when they started to come in. I just took them in that order. Um, so I'll just start. So number one, in what unique ways have you talked about coaching in your stories? And that was Caitlin. Um, in the beginning, I was deathly afraid to say anything about coaching, to be completely honest with you. Um, and it was the first time that I shared, I was like, okay, I better do this Thursday thing that everyone keeps doing where they share payday and rank recognition. So I'm just, I'm just going to do it with my eyes closed. I'm just going to hit post. And so I did that for my stories and wouldn't you know it, I, you've all seen Kate P6. She's success club 10 already. She was a challenger for me for a couple of months. And she responded to that story and said, I've been meaning to ask you. And I saw it in your stories. Can you tell me more about the coaching opportunity? And I'm like, duh, why have I not been sharing earlier that this is actually an opportunity? We think it's obvious because obviously we're not doing this for free. There must be some kind of business behind what we're doing and what we're sharing and how we're helping other people. But some, it's, it's not that obvious for people to reach out and ask about it unless you're actually talking about it. So I will say that I'm still not the best with talking about the opportunity. Um, I do always celebrate my team's accomplishments, uh, whether it's success starter, rank advancements. Um, I do share when we do virtual Zooms and it was an eye opener for me in the diamond bet. I think it was Holly who trained and she said, stop showing pictures of your Zoom calls because in 2020, everyone was on Zoom calls. What they don't want is another Zoom call. So just showing your Sunday night picture of your Zoom calls is not gonna bring all these people in. So what's gonna make us stand out as coaches, even though we do utilize things like Zoom. So I started thinking about it and I'm like, okay, so the virtual gym in the morning or whenever you get on, that has changed my business because people ask about it. 
Um, they may not be comfortable getting on it yet, but they see it and they want to be a part of something like that because working out at home can be very um, lonely. So, and people miss their gym. So seeing that opportunity is something fun that as coaches, we dive into more than our challengers do. But also, to, I, I moving forward, listening to what Holly says is to talk more about that we get to be trained by people who have gone before us. You know, we have our, our coaches who are multiple diamond coaches who have been around for more than just a year or two. And so they have all this knowledge that we don't, and we need to be saying, look who I was trained by. Look at the training that I just got on, you know, on a Tuesday night. And now I get all of those tools and resources and I can now share them with my new coaches or share them with you was what you would say on your stories if you want to just speak directly to your audience. So moving forward, that's what I want to do more of. Number two, what is your approach to running your groups? What platform are you using? Do you share mostly motivational content or do you have a teaching itinerary? And that was Shanna. Is it Shanna? Is that how you say her name? Shanna Moody? Okay. Um, I just switched back to the bot app when I started in February, I was just doing one-to-one -one messages with my people until I felt like I had a few people that I could put into a group together. Um, I should have just started with one person, but I didn't, I was just too scared. And so I did one-to-one -one coaching. And then in April, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go right into the bot app. I don't know any different. And so I went to the bot app. And if anyone remembers last year in the spring, it was a little sketchy in the bot app. And, and I, every time I would schedule a post, it would go up immediately. It wouldn't wait till the morning to, to post. So I started getting scared. And then the pinned post would never pin. It was just messy. So after that April, I was like, all right, we're going to Facebook. Went to Facebook, loved it. And then lots of political stuff. And people were like, I don't really want to be on Facebook. I really don't. And so when I started getting cold market interest from Instagram, they were like, do you do this on Facebook? And I'm like, oh, no, I don't do this on Facebook. <laughs> so I quick switched to the bot app because I realized that people were not interested in the Facebook thing. Now, my current challengers loved Facebook because they were into it, but they made the switch. It is a little bit of an adjustment, but I do think long-term that the bot app is where you should be. Uh, I've done the basic 21 day script that Raquel and Jess have for us. I've also created my own ultimate portion fix focused group. It's intense, but everyone agreed that they really wanted to dive deep into ultimate portion fix and not just know their container count. So I put together a three week video viewing guide for the ultimate portion fix. Um, the thing that I didn't really take into account and I should have, because I would have been that person. When people fell behind on the, the daily video to view, if, if it had been a couple of days and they hadn't caught up, they uh, became very discouraged and they pretty much shut down and cut out. So I only ran that group uh, once or twice. Um, and so I should have, and I did on the weekend say, Hey, you can play catch up, but they were too, too far gone. They were too upset about it. So, um, I switched back to doing the 21 day script and then Erica and I have joined forces, one of my coaches. Um, and we kind of tweaked the script to have a little bit of our own voice in it. Um, and it's working really well this month. So for a while I was doing two groups, a veteran group and a newbie group because for a while the newbies were really intimidated by the veterans that during prep week veterans were like going hard posting water pictures posting se sweaty selfies posting their food posting everything and they were like what's going on i don't even know how much water i should be drinking so that's when i separated them um and the veterans were already madly in love with each other so they were they didn't care where they went as long as they went together so they went to a veteran group but then i realized that my all my newbies at once um everyone was afraid to post. So there was a strength to having the veterans in the group. So come uh, Christmas time or Thanksgiving, I put them all back together again, which was actually good. Uh, and they, the energy was amazing and still is. So they're all still together now. And then we're gonna keep them together again one more month and then we're gonna split and do two separate groups again and we'll see how it goes. The only thing is, I don't know about content for the veteran group. I know that we have a script from, um, mompreneur, but I'm just, I'm not, I'm not sure what we're going to do there yet. So I don't really have the answer for that. Um, what I do in the group, 
or, and what we're doing now together is we have routine things every week that they can look forward to because I think mindset is the piece that most women have missed with all the other plans and programs they've done in the past. And that's why they're all considered diets and ours is not because ours is a total solution. It gives them everything they need. They don't have to go anywhere else. So I wanted them to have mindset things so that every day or almost every day when they woke up, they thought something about what I had said. You know, if they wake up on Monday, they know what I'm going to be saying on Monday before they even check the posts. So it's always never miss a Monday, which we've heard all the time from the, our own challenge groups that we were in when we started to the point where my challengers now write it in their posts, in their, you know, when they're checking in, it's always never miss a Monday. And we talk about on Sunday night, if there's anything you can do for yourself is make sure you start off the week strong by not missing your Monday. Even if it's messy, even if you don't have anything prepped, you know, no matter what, just don't miss that Monday with showing up for yourself because that's going to set the tone for your week. But they also know that even if they fell apart on Monday, they're not waiting until next Monday to get back 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 up on the plan and get going again i and that's in my welcome email to them is you're going to promise me that you're going to get up the next day because that sun going up every single day is your signal that you get a completely fresh start and so there's nothing on monday that signals you for a fresh start but the sun is going to signal you every single day that you get a fresh start and you can you notice my challengers will say like oh the last three days were awful but it's thursday it's a new day for me. And so they get started. I'm not waiting until Monday. And I love when you start to say the same things to them over and over again, it becomes a part of who they are. We have just keep going Wednesday because you go strong Monday and Tuesday and then Wednesday is hump day. And I think it's hump day for a reason because some people don't actually get over it. And so then it's all downhill from Wednesday on. And so again, they're waiting for that following Monday. So it's just keep it going Wednesday as well as we just started whip it up Wednesdays because they really want to start sharing recipes with each other. Um, and they're getting really good at screenshots of the bot app and finding the recipes. So whip it up Wednesday, what's everybody whipping up? And it could be something that they've done in the past week or what they're doing that night. We do celebration Thursday because I want people to start thinking like coaches and Thursday's our favorite day of the week. We love celebrating, you know, the work that we do. We love celebrating rank advancements. So why shouldn't our challengers be celebrating on Thursdays too? Because if they love that celebration every single week, they'll be the perfect coach. They'll already know which day of the week is the best day of the week. So we do Celebration Thursday, and that's when they share their wins for the week. Um, Friday, we always talk about don't let your weekend be your weekend. So that gets their mindset going, because if I wait till Saturday to remind them, they may have already had a weekend starting on Friday. So we remind them on Friday morning about not letting the weekend go um, by talking about what we can do to prepare and get through the weekend, still enjoying it, but still staying on track. And then. Um, Sunday, we do set your, set your intentions Sunday. Um, my challengers in their welcome email, we, I talk about getting a journey journal. So in order to get in touch with those emotions and you know the mindset piece, the teacher in me goes directly to writing. So journaling and writing things down. And I know some people think that journaling is woo-woo, but it really gets them to think about things and to think about their journey. So they have their journey journals and they set their intentions in their journey journals. They can write down their wins if they never wrote them down on Thursday. And then they write what's going to happen in the week ahead. And I teach them to set their intentions as if they've already happened. So I drink my water every day. I get all of my veggies in every day. I push play on my workout, whatever it is that they want as their intentions. That's totally personal to them. But then in the check-in post in the evening, they can actually write what their intentions are for the week. And it's really powerful to see what everybody writes. And they're writing more than one thing. They're writing up to five or six things that they are setting for their intentions for the week in terms of their health and their mindset. And Sunday is also, it used to be Friday and now we switched to Sunday, coach check-in day. And they know we're trying to set boundaries and say, you might not hear from us for up to 24 to 48 hours, but we will get back to you. And we do ask through Facebook Messenger if they have it, because then we can voice memo them back. And I love voice memoing them back. I've gotten so many challengers that say it was so good to hear your voice. I needed that. So that's how we check in with our challengers. And Erica brought up a good point. Doing coach check-ins on Sundays is great because when we actually respond to them on Monday, they've already started their day. So we can say, okay, how are you doing so far? You said you were gonna do X, Y, and Z. Are you already doing it? Are you already in that right path? And also to keep them engaged, um, the third week of a challenge, we try and do some type of 
challenge. So a water challenge or have a salad every day challenge or show us your containers every day challenge. And then, you know, a fun prize afterwards. But that third, third week is good because they've already had prep week plus two salad weeks. And now they have that third week so they can do that. Number three, how'd you get the diamond? Okay, this is Genevieve. Genevieve, I thought, I hope you have pen and papers because I'm just gonna list this really fast. Um, and then you can go back and like look at numbers later, I guess. So I went back and looked at my breakdown of coaches. She asked, can you break, can you give us a step-by-step -step breakdown of who signed up? Discount coaches, family members, working coaches, okay? So November, I was completely quiet. I told Raquel, don't add me to the team page, nothing. Like I just, I, I just wanna see what I can do with this with no support apparently. Um, so the last week of November, I signed two discount coaches, which was my husband and um, one of my best friends who's now actually an active coach. She might be on this call right now, Jen. Um, Jen had been watching my journey for the past two months and she's like, okay, I, I wanna do this too. But she just wanted to be a discount coach. And then my husband, because Raquel had talked about elite and I was like, okay, so she says Emerald is two, two coaches. So I'll just sign two people up so I can help her with this goal that she has. Cause I love being a part of a team and I love a team goal. So I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know any of you, but I wanted to be an Emerald cause I thought maybe that would help her somehow. Cause I feel like she said at one point she needed Emeralds or something. So that's what I was going to do in quiet. Um, and then, um, December, no coaches, because I wasn't really doing anything. January, no coaches. And then in February 23rd, I announced I was coaching. Did not sign any coaches, discount working, nothing until May. May, um, one discount coach who signed, had signed up as a challenger the month before. When she first signed up as a challenger, I did offer the discount coach. So I'm like, I better do this thing. People say I should be doing this, so let me offer it. And she's like, no, no, thank you. Let me see how I like things first. The next month, she's like, yes, please sign me up for the discount. And then in June, I signed up two discount coaches. Um, both are now working coaches as of December um, and hustling. Uh, and then I did sign also in June one working coach who, um, Erica Odell, who wanted the month to just concentrate on her own journey. And then she announced she was a coach a month later. And then in July, I signed two more working coaches who both were challengers, Kate Pisick and Lindsay Sides. So Lindsay, Kate, and Erica really ran together. Like th that was, it was us, it was the four of us working together. And then August, I signed another working coach, but she never really worked. Um, and now she's inactive, like she's nowhere. So um, it happens. And then September, Erica went emerald. September, Lindsay also went emerald. So September was when I went diamond. And at that point, I had five discount coaches and four working coaches. And then um, as of right now, September, I signed a working coach who's actually taking a break right now. October, two discount coaches. November, one discount coach who did say maybe later in the new year. Um, one working coach. And then in December, two discount coaches with one of them being a maybe later and two working coaches. So currently I have 16 total coaches, nine working coaches, eight of which are emeralds and seven discount coaches. So hopefully you got all that Genevieve. All right. Another one from Genevieve. What's your process for converting a client into a working coach? Okay. So I don't really have a process. Um, when I notice that someone does something that a coach would do, and you see it in your challenge groups, you just, you reach out to them and you tell them, you recognize what they did, thank them for whatever it is they did in the group and tell them, I just want you to know that you're a coach and you didn't even know it. Um, I've had a couple like that. You plant the seed. They usually don't are like, oh, really? Okay, yeah, let's do this. Mine haven't, but you plant the seed and you let them know every time you see it, that they have potential to be an amazing coach. Um, I also encourage my challengers to share their journeys on social because they're doing it just like we would if we went to a restaurant that we loved or we saw a movie that we loved or heck, everybody shares their Netflix you know, shows that they love, right? And we don't hesitate to be on social and tell people about these shows we love. So when they're in full challenger mode and they, aren't, they don't have a coach mindset, they're not signed up as a coach, they're not afraid to share their journey. They might not be showing their full blown workouts, but they might share some part of what they're doing, which gets curiosity going. And I've had a few challengers who have reached out to me and they're like, someone just said this, like, what do I say to them? I'm like, oh, okay, so we have two 
places you can go. I can either help and sign them up so they can be a challenger alongside of you, or we can convert you to a coach and then you can make that income and help your friends get started on their own journey. Um, so I have a few that I'm watching and I even coach them a little bit. Like if they're putting like hashtag nine week control freak, hashtag beach body, I write them. I'm like, Hey, just in case you want to have that coach mindset, I would take away the hashtag beach body. And I would take away things that people could search on their own, because if they can search it on their own, they're just going to sign up on beachbody.com and they're not going to come to you. If you ever want to make this income. And then she went right back to her post, deleted all of it. And she's like, how's that? And I was like, perfect. So it just, I think they just need the confidence to know that they could possibly do this. Um, I do have one challenger right now who's really struggling with accountability. I told her I knew exactly where she was coming from. That was me. I was the worst challenger probably Raquel's ever had because I would send her these long coach check-ins, but wasn't doing anything and was full of excuses. Uh, she got voice memos from me. Little did she know what she was getting herself into. <laughs> she can't go a day without me contacting her at least once. Um, so this challenger, I said, listen, she said, I really just doing it for myself is not enough. I said, okay. So, and I know she's got a servant's heart and she loves to serve others. And I said, what happens if your journey could inspire other women who feel like you do right now? What happens if what you're doing right now could get other women going in the right direction towards loving themselves more and, 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 um, focusing on their own health so that their children could see that. She's like, yeah, I know what, I, I think I can do it. I think I can do it. And then she writes me an hour later. She's like, so what happens if like, I want to coach then? And I was like, exactly. <laughs> so she's like, all right, I'm thinking about it. But now she has a whole new mindset and all of a sudden she is gung ho on her journey. Um, again, just plant seeds. Number five, what is your layout and your challenge groups for prep week? How do you get people to commit to the nutrition? That was Genevieve, but along the same lines was Marissa asked about challenger expectations. So prep week is closely tied to um, Jess and Raquel's prep week script, but um, we just added to it a little bit. But the prep week focuses are have your body weight in ounces of water, Shakeology every single day, which I wasn't doing in the beginning as a coach, but, and I was losing people because they weren't seeing the value of Shakeology. And I said, even if the rest of your day falls apart, if you get Shakeology in your day and you're drinking your water, you've won half the battle. Like, just don't let go of everything. This is, this will help pull you through until you can get back on track. Um, four plus servings of veggies and your workouts if you're ready to get started. But for some people, that's way too scary to do all of the above. So I say, don't sweat it. Push play on your workouts starting on day one, prep week. Just figure out how to find your workouts. Um, and then the actual flow of the first week is we talk about nutrition, participation in the group, um, fitness and making sure your bod works and that you know where you're going to actually work out, um, water, uh, and then we do a separate post on if everything else falls apart, be, you know, be water and Shakeology. And always when you're feeling that like urge to go into the pantry, go back to the fridge and go get veggies first. And then if you're still hungry after you chug the water and you eat the veggies, let's, re let's adjust and see if there's something going on with your nutrition overall. Um, and then coach check-ins, the first one they ever do with me is they send me their long and short-term goals and their why, which I believe is video five in Ultimate Portion Fix. So I say, if you haven't started watching it, go to video five. I want Autumn to teach you about short and long-term goals and your why, and then tell me what that why is. If their why is really surface, we'll go back and forth in a conversation until I get really deep and I just keep asking them, but why? But why? But why? And that's Simon Sinek. And he talks all about your why and how you get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper until you uncover things that sometimes we're both in tears about. So that's how I work it with them because I really want to get them to the heart of why they're doing in this. And it's not to be a certain number on the scale. Um, challenger expectations, weekly check-ins with me. Uh, reach out if you're struggling. Please don't try and do it on your own. I've been there already. I can help you pull through. And again, do not wait for Mondays. Number six, am I okay? Oh God. Um, how much time are you spending on coach activities each day? What's your typical client profile? That was Shauna. I spend typically two to three hours a day on coaching and no, I do not sit down all at once and get it all done. I have 100% undiagnosed ADD. It 100% runs in my family and my focus is all over the place. So, um, 
it's scattered throughout the day. Plus I've got four kids at home virtually learning and my son has taken over my office and he, every 43 minutes when a class ends, he wants to come out and talk to me and God bless him one day, he won't be here to, to do that with me because he'll be back in school. So I'm just gonna soak it in. But you know, when you get in that zone, that flow, and then you get disrupted, it's constant. And so he'll mute himself because now he comes out of the office, mutes himself, and then he's having conversations with me, tell me about the kid in the corner who's got the screen and this and that. And so I don't really, it's hard to get a lot of work done during the day with him here um, and the girls coming down. Uh, client profile is mostly working mamas, but I do have some that are, aren't moms. Uh, typical age profile, I would say, is like 35 to 45. Um, how do you keep your ladies engaged in the bod group? That was Christina and Marissa. Again, weekly check-ins going live. Um, always having a daily action, a call to action on every single morning post that we make. And then we do a check-in in the evening. Um, and that's that, but it's pretty simple. If you don't have people though, like if it's like crickets and we, I have had months where it's been like that, that's when I really utilize the one-on-one -on -one um, messaging and saying, oh my gosh, yes, share that with the group. Oh my gosh, yes, share that with the group. Um, and just encouraging them because I think it's just a confidence thing. Uh, Raquel asked, what's your mindset like? Okay, so when I came in, Raquel knows that I had the scarcity mindset when I came into coaching. So for example, um, I would stop all business activities completely once I had hit success club because I wanted to make sure I saved enough for the next month, right? Um, but what I didn't know was it kind of just, it killed my mojo in terms of my business. It killed the momentum. And, and some of these people I should have reached out to sooner and I didn't cause I was waiting for the next month. Uh, I now work my business activity tracker every single day. You have to in this business or else you, I feel like I take a couple steps back when I miss too many days of not doing the tracker. I did not solidly do the tracker every single day until July. And then July, all of a sudden it was like, it hit me. And I, I will be honest with you. It's when I started sponsoring working coaches and I was like, well, shoot, if I'm telling them they have to work their tracker, I better be doing it too. I better be setting the example. And that's when my business took off. Um, oh, this was a big one. And Erica and I've had conversations about this, the mindset, think about your mindset on the first of the month versus wherever in the month when you hit success club. Every time on the first of the month, seeing that zero in my coach office gets me. It was getting me every single month. It was like, oh my God, like just 24 hours ago, I was here and now I'm at zero again. And I was approaching my work for the day completely differently than I was just the day before. And what changed? 24 hours and the number zero was on my screen. That was it. So I tried to approach things as if I had already hit success club because notice your mood, notice how you approach things once you have hit success club. You are like smooth, like everything's good. You get a no, you're like, whatever, you move on. But when you haven't hit success club yet and you get a no, you're like, oh my God, but they need this. I need this, they need this. I just, and you're begging and you're, it's just, it was bad. It was really bad. And so I know, so notice the next time you hit success club, how you feel and how you work your business for the rest of the month. And then I need you to write it down and journal it until you really get it. And then on that first of the month, you keep going with that same attitude and mindset that you did when you had already hit success club five or 10. Um, and that's how I switched from the scarcity mindset to that abundance mindset was you just, you just keep going. Um, okay. I also did not know how to dream big. I thought I was dreaming big, which was just putting down in my journal the next thing that I was shooting for. So when I was Emerald, I was writing down that I wanted to be a diamond coach. Um, and even when I became a diamond coach in September at first, I was just writing that I wanted to be a one-star diamond or I am a one-star diamond coach. Um, but I've learned to up my game from being a part of this team and talking to Raquel constantly. And now I write that I'm a five diamond elite coach. And so I make all of my plans based on being a five diamond coach and based on having the elite points for the year. So I watched that elite tracker last year and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm a premier. I mean, I wasn't really, it wasn't a premier coach because I wasn't a two star yet, but I mean, I was looking at the points and I'm like, Oh, I have enough points for, you know? So at the end I'm like, I have enough points for elite. Oh my gosh. Like, this is it. Like I can do this. So, um, 
just having that mindset to really, really dream big. And even though you're making short-term goals and plans for the next step in your business, you, you need to be like three steps ahead. So when I hit team builder, I reached out to Raquel and I was like, okay, so what steps do I need to take to hit elite? You know, I did, I just ignored the two things in between and you just have to, you have to look really far in advance um, so that you don't stall when you get to that next point in your journey and kind of sit back and chill out for a bit. Number nine, how do you handle the nose and how do you keep yourself excited every day? That was Raquel too. Um, unless they tell me that I'm crazy and that they're blocking me, which obviously would be a hard no, um, they're not a no. They, they're just an, I'm scared right now to do this with you, but you should probably check in with me later. Even though they don't say that, that's where I put them on my list. And I just follow up and it's all according to what they say. Like one was um, in September, she said, I'm gonna try Weight Watchers for the rest of the year. I, I will reevaluate in January. I put on my calendar, I didn't bother her on the first, but I did reach out to her on the second. And I said, hey, how's it going? I haven't seen any posts by you in a while. You know, how's it going with Weight Watchers? Um, and she wrote back and she's like, all right, I wanna do this with you. She goes, I've been watching you and Weight Watchers is not going well. And almost every single week in her coach check-in now, she writes, well, she does. And she even writes it on, um, in the challenge group. She said, thank, I, thank you for not giving up on me. And so just because someone's not ready for you right now does not mean that they don't ever want you to help them. It's mostly fear. It's almost all the time it's fear. And there have been people who have given me an objection just because they hit me with one objection does not mean I walk away from them right then and there. I will not be pushy and I will not be salesy. But sometimes you just need to dig a little deeper because they're just giving you surface answers as to why they're not doing this and there's something deeper. So you haven't uncovered the deeper things yet. Um, so just with that slow back and forth conversation, you can uncover a lot. Don't focus on a sale. These people are, you're giving them an experience. You're giving them something that could be life changing if they embrace it. So I don't look at challenge packs as a sale. I look at challenge packs is like their invitation to totally freaking change their life. But not only does it change their life, it, changes, it can change their whole family's life. It can change you know, their job. It, can, it could change everything. So we can't look at these challenge packs. It's like, I gotta get, I gotta get this next sale. I gotta get this next. This is not a salesy. I've been in sales. This is not salesy. I mean, you can make it look salesy by being obsessed with selling the challenge packs. But if you look at this as an opportunity, you get to share with other people because of how it can change their life and then have a ripple effect on even more people, it changes your view on, so I'll get teary-eyed and emotional, but it changes your view on everything because it has absolutely 100% changed my life. And if it hasn't changed your life, then if it hasn't changed your life yet, then I encourage you to go back and dig deep into your own journey. Because sometimes people come into the business and they get so focused on serving others and selling challenge packs and all this. And they forget about what brought them here in the first place or that you need to be on your own journey. You need to be on your own journey first. And if you've lost that, or you really haven't connected with why this journey has changed you or how it has helped you to be a better person, then I encourage you to go back, take a step back and do the nutrition plan in its entirety. Because if you're not doing one of our new two nutrition plans, like how can you help other people do it? And I mean, really do it. Like watch every single freaking video more than once know what Autumn's going to say before she even says it when you've watched it the second time or third time through. Um, just, you got to go all in uh, with your own health journey first. Keeping myself excited every day, focus on my own journey, see challengers get results, become obsessed with helping your, I mean, don't become weird, but become obsessed with helping your challengers get results. Don't, I mean, don't get crazy psycho, but you know what I mean? Like just be, they need to know that your number one mission is to get them results. You want them to feel better. You want them to feel amazing. You want them to find pure joy again. You want them to find happiness. That all of the things that we find on our own journey. Stay connected with your upline coach. Raquel has not changed her number yet. Um, and she hears from me now. I've got her on Marco too. I'm sure she's like, oh God, it's another Marco. <laughs> and the thing is, Marco doesn't tell you how long it is. So you have no idea. You just have to press play and hold on tight. <laughs> you don't know how long I'm going to talk. Uh, my coaches that do Marco with me too know the same thing. Um, focus on your current goal, but always be thinking two steps ahead. 
uh, I love a challenge. So I really want to hit success club five by the 10th success club 10 by the 20th. Does it always happen? No, my best months in this business. I did not hit success club 10 by the 20th. So don't be discouraged that you're not going to hit it either. Um, I also keep track of my weekly income and the weekly average for the month. Some months you have four paychecks, some months you have five paychecks and that makes a difference. So for a while I was just looking at my total, total amount earned each month. But then I was like, wait a minute, summer four or summer five, that's not really, I can't, that's not comparing apples to apples. So then I would take my total income for the month divided by either four paychecks or five. And so I have a list of my weekly income per month. And my goal is to beat last month's weekly income. So every single week when a new, you know, new check comes, I add it divided by how many paychecks I've gotten so far. So I see my average to make sure that I keep steadily climbing my weekly average. Um, yeah, and that was it on that. Um, and then once you hit diamonds, which I didn't realize when you hit diamond, like so many things unlock and including tracking like your elite points and things. That's fun to me. I love that. So I would go in and I didn't know what any of it meant, but I just, there's FAQs upon FAQs. So when you're in one, then it's like, you have to click another one to go to another page and it's all there. Um, should I stop? No, let's just keep going. Just kind okay. of go through as many questions as you can get. You guys, if you need to pop off, totally understand that. Um, I will post the recording on the team page. So if you have to leave or whatever, we can, you can always come back and watch the recording. Keep going. Okay. okay. Um, Lindsay asked, have you built upon relationships with people that you've never met? Um, so I get most of my interest in my posts, which is pretty sad because don't go to my social media. Uh, I, I, I can get those stories down like nobody's business. And I only have on average about maybe on a good day, a hundred people, which I looked a year ago, I had 25 today, a year ago, and now I have a hundred, which I know to the bigger coaches, they're like, well, a hundred is like a, would not happen for me. But for me, that's huge. And always at the very bottom, I have like newbie people. So even though I might must lose people somewhere else, I am gaining newbie people at the bottom. I'm not good with my posts yet something that I'm working on. The only thing that holds me back, I have posts written for days. I'm not lying because I get all my inspiration when I write my stories, especially my fitness ones. So I'll copy and paste everything I just wrote. And I have, I have posts for days. Um, my holdup is the pictures, uh, just having a picture to post. So I know I'm working on that, but so my posts though, get the most attraction on Instagram. Um, and so when someone shows interest or just comments or anything, I start to just, I keep a list of who's done that in terms of like, I call them my strangers, um, and just keep loving on them on social as well as during power hours when we make connections with new, um, with new accounts. I, I do put them in those collections folders. I'm not really good about going back to the collections folders. Um, better with just a list and not like some fancy Excel spreadsheet, just a list in my notes on my phone. And so accounts that I'm like, Oh yeah, like we need to keep talking. I just start to figure out who they are as a person on social. So it's not like off the bat I'm inviting and things like that. Just loving on people through social is really how I'm building the relationships. Uh, number 11, how do you recruit coaches? How do you recruit your coaches and what do you find is the best way to support them? That was Lori. So um, how do I recruit coaches? So challengers make the best coaches. Um, and so those are the people that, and I don't go through my whole challenger list and reach out to all of them in a month. I, it, it'll hit you when they're responding in a one-to-one -one message with you or things that you keep seeing them post on their social or things that they're posting in the challenge group. And I just, it's just a genuine thing. Like I just reach out to them and I say, hey, listen, what you did was awesome. And you're, you are coach material. Like you could do this. Um, the other way is if I am building a relationship with someone on social and I notice that they're doing all the things that we're doing, but they're just doing it for their own health. Like they're not connected to anything. They're not doing, then I just reach out to them and I start talking to them about what they're doing and why they're doing it. And then I just ask them if, you know, if they've ever thought about this as an opportunity where they could actually make an income doing what they're already doing. Um, 
uh, once they're coaches, how do I support them? So they get a welcome email with um, the checklist that Raquel and Jess have for, you know, first coach steps where they watch the videos, uh, the Beachbody videos. And then once they've completed that checklist, it actually says in my email, just to make sure that I hold myself accountable, please reach out to me to schedule a one-to-one -one Zoom. Um, so then we can do a one-to-one -one Zoom. If they don't reach out to me and ask for a one-to-one -one Zoom, I will mention it in a message or two, but essentially it is up to them to schedule that one-to-one -one Zoom with us. Um, then once we do the Zoom, we talk about their personal health, goal, health goals first, because what I don't want them to loo lose is that focus on their own health journey. So we always talk about their personal health goals first. Then we talk about their business goals. What do they want to get out of this business? And then we also talk about, which I think is the most important, if they have a family, what are their family goals? What do they want this business to do for their family? And so that can be health-wise and that can be income-wise. That could be all kinds of things. And I think that's really powerful because then they start to think about this business as more than just uh, making money. Um, it can hit them on a whole new level in terms of how it can have a ripple effect on their family. And in my little team on Tuesdays, we either get together on our own Zoom um, together, or we can jump on the team VIP live Zoom and just get some work done. But just an opportunity for them to, those that every single one of my coaches works full time. So an opportunity to sit down, have designated time to work. Now, are you going to build a booming business working one day a week for one hour on your business tracker? No, not even a chance because what you do this week will not have a ripple effect on next week if you're only doing it once a week. So I'm not saying that, but hopefully if they can get into that habit of sitting down and using it, they'll do it more often. Um, what do your connection and invite messages look like? That was Marissa. Connections is I just like just liking on their stuff, commenting on their things, going back. I really am comfortable, and maybe this might be how I am because I do stories a lot. I love to find people who have stories up that I can comment on. For some reason, it doesn't seem as scary as like just doing a personal message on the side or even commenting below a picture or something like that, especially if like no one else has commented on the picture from like seven days ago and all of a sudden here you are, stranger danger, all of a sudden commenting on their pictures creeps me out. So taking it into stories is so much easier. It just seems so much more casual. Um, and when I get comments from people in my stories who I don't know, I just write them, it's no big deal. Um, so that's how I do the connections. And then the invites don't really happen for a while with me. It's kind of like dating. Um, you gotta get to know them first. I mean, it's creepy. I don't know about you, but lately I feel like I'm getting a message a day from some direct salesperson who is just desperate for a sale and they go right at it. I mean, the, the sale is there. I'm like, hi, oh, this is on Facebook. Thanks for the friend request. How do we know each other? Cause then I look and see mutual friends. I'm like, I see how they got to me. Um, and then they go right into it. I mean, they like word vomit all over. And I'm like, oh man. Like, I feel bad for them. And then I'm like, should I be keeping a list of people who maybe we could convert into coaches and then teach them the real way to connect with people on social? Sure, maybe we should be. I should probably go back. But um, again, invites don't happen for quite a while because that stuff is so spammy, icky, and we don't do that. Number 13, what, suge what suggestions would you make to a coach who has a bunch of challengers, but it's lacking the community building piece? That was Marissa. Um, again, that third week challenge for them and reaching out to them one-on-one -on -one and really encouraging them to share it with the group, whatever it is, share that with the group. Oh my gosh, can you please share that with the group? And, and that can start to build that engagement. Number 14, I remember you saying you were intimidated about posting stories, but you're so genuine in them now. What shifted that made you feel comfortable posting stories consistently? That was Kristen. Doing it consistently every day built the confidence. So I started posting my workouts. I did not want to. I wanted to vomit doing it, and I did it anyway. And I will tell you, after just one week, I felt so much more confident doing it. Because guys, anything that you do consistently over time builds a habit and confidence. Uh, and I used to care a lot of what people thought of me when I first, gosh, I thought about being a coach three years ago when I had a different coach and my husband and I sat down and talked about it and he was like, yeah, no, you do not want to do that. And I'm like, yeah, no, I don't want to do that. Like, I'm not ever going to be in workout clothes and posing on the screen for a picture. I'm no, not, that's not going to be me. And the hell if I'm going to record my workouts bouncing all over the place where everything is 
bouncing with you. I'm not doing it. Like, he's like, yeah, no, we're, nope, nope, not doing it. So, um, <laughs> here we are now doing it consistently every day. I could give a, you know what, what people think about me now, which is insane. Like my dad says every day, he's like, you do that dance every single day on your screen. Does it do anything for you? <laughs> I said, dad, most people reach out to me about that drink I'm making. They want to know what the heck it is. And they want some of it because I'm bouncing all over the place. So now he loves waking up to my, you know, watching my dance every single day. And I honestly don't give a crap what I don't, I don't care what anyone thinks about me. Um, and honestly, guys, their opinions are not paying my bills. So that's why I really don't care what they think about me. And so though, and so that fear that I used to have about what people thought about me, all I keep thinking is, okay, if someone is thinking of something about me, I'm just going to prove to them how awesome this is and how they're missing out by just watching every single day. So that's the kind of attitude I now have, which I didn't have when I started. 15, how do you help your new coaches bridge the gap from no social media or to being comfortable with sharing their journey? That was Kristen. And I just tell them to start. It's going to be messy. I'm not going to force you to post your workouts, but I'm going to tell you from experience that I never thought I would. And now I do. And it has changed my business. Um, and don't try and make your stories look like somebody else's because that, that, that's not you. You, it, it will come out. And so Jenny is my, Jenny Masters is my success partner. And so we sat on a zoom call in, I don't know when that was, I think June. And we sat and we were like, okay, well, who are we? Like, if someone were to look at our stories, could they describe who I am as a person? And so I was like, shoot, I have no idea who I am. <laughs> I'm not lying. I really had, I'm, I didn't know what people were, could say about me except for I ate healthy foods and I worked out. And so that's what I had been missing in my stories for a while. So I really dug down deep on who I was and what did I love and what did I hate and what were my pet peeves and this crazy family that I have. And so now I just, share all the things and I'm comfortable with it and people can relate to it and people message me about it. And it's just, I think coaching is amazing because you really truly figure out who you are. Um, and I know that sounds funny at 43. I didn't know who I was before. I did know who I was, but I just, so much more has come out that I wasn't, that wasn't really, I didn't feel it before. So it's, it's amazing. And just, they just need to start. Uh, 16, what does your power hour look like? You have a busy life. Do you just stick to an hour or do you spread it out throughout your day? That was Kristen. I spread it throughout my day. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have the focus thing and other humans who mess with my focus. So it's all over the place. Um, 17, are you still building in your warm market or are you in your cold market now? Did you have a lot of your warm market eager to join you or were they reluctant at first? That was Kristen. Ha. Huh. Um, I had a few warm market in the beginning, uh, my, my besties, uh, just two of them. Um, and no, there's a lot of people that I am close to that it kills me because I still have not said anything to them because it actually is more comfortable to say things to acquaintances or people I don't know, strangers that are watching my stories than to reach out to like your best. So like my best friends for years, still not nothing, nothing. So no, my, no, it didn't start. Like everyone was like, yay, let me join you. That was not the case for me. Um, I am, but if you're talking about warm market, it's like, they know who I am. Yes. There are still people in my warm market who are reaching out to me. And I told, unless you have gotten a solid no from however many followers you have on Facebook and however many followers you have on Instagram, um, but you know them personally on some level or through another person, I still consider those people warm market. Um, and until they tell you no, they're still prospects to me. So like, that's that whole abundance thing. Like you can't say, oh, I'm out of my warm market now. Like I don't have anybody else to ask. I mean, unless you went through your entire Facebook friend list, um, you might have someone to, to reach out to still. Um, but I happy to report in August, I started hitting, I call them a stranger market. So those are the people I did not know. And they live in all far off places. Although I did just become BFS with someone in Mexico and I'm like, dang it, can't help you. Um, so we need to get down in Mexico because I need to help Leanne. But, um, yeah, I'm in my stranger market now, which would be my cold market. Um, 
How many, oh, Laura Simon, how many challenge groups do you run and do you run them on your own or with a team? Do you have a success partner? Um, we run, I said one now, going back to two soon, I run it with Erica, um, who was my very first um, coach, working coach to sign up with me in um, July, uh, August or June, and then she started in July. Um, I do have a majority of my coaches in that challenge group st still because they need they need the support still on their own health journey so they um interact with our group as a challenger but a lot of them have their own challenge groups now and the more trainings that i listen to the more i want to support them with being able to run their own challenge groups even with just a few challengers um do i have a success partner yes i would say right now i have multiple because I have Jenny and then um, I feel like because I'm I still consider myself new I feel like my coaches are my success part like we're we're working together so I very much feel like they are my success partners too and then Laura asked a funny question she said do you get your badassery from your mom your dad or both um, and I would say both I also get my ADD from both of them as well <laughs> But yeah, I definitely have a little bit of mom and dad in me, but that was funny. So that is it. Woo! There we go. 951. Ha! Huh. <laughs> Thank you. That was a lot of questions to run through. And I felt like you really made sure to take time to answer all of them, which I know we all appreciate so much. Um, I will post this recording, but truly I hope the biggest takeaway that you got is how much she pours into her groups and her customers, that is the heart of what we do. Mm -hmm. And I think when you do that, you naturally create lifers who then wanna join your team and pass that on. So I always know that when I'm feeling stuck or what am I gonna do, I have to pour more and like, how can I serve them better? And if it's crickets, how can I, you know, voice memo them? I feel like I've gotten away from voice memo and reminded me to do that with my clients. So I'm very excited, but Thank you so much for taking time to do yeah, this. I hope that you guys liked it. Um, this is something we're going to start doing monthly. I'm um, just having like a coach hot seat because we all have different ways to do it. And I know that we all learn different ways as well. And yes, you're an amazing human, Angela. I totally agree with that. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for being on tonight. I will post the recording in the group. Bye, guys.